thank you very much for giving me a floor. Uh, first of all, I would uh, uh, like to uh, congratulate uh, all the Kursik community. First of all, uh, Ferenc, uh, for and Jody for establishing for establishing such a, a great forum for exchange of opinions between all the parts of Europe. Uh, in the very center of Europe, on the border between uh, uh, Hungary and Austria. Uh, I do know on my personal experience uh, what the uh, difficult and what the uh, job it is to bring together such uh, so many people, so many outstanding personalities and give uh, then the possibility freely to exchange their minds and opinions and um, to give a floor to a younger um, audience as well. So my heartiest congratulations to all the Kursa community headed by Ferenc and Jody. I'm very glad to see you, but I pity very much that uh, we have to keep distance now and I cannot shake your hands, I cannot embrace you, but at least we can meet in uh, this way and thanks to the modern techniques. Uh, my presentation will uh, be uh, consist consisting of two parts, one uh, where I shall deliver on the um, history of 30 years uh, relations between Russia and Central Europe. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, the next uh, one more meeting which is mainly dedicated to this event. And then I shall speak on my own impressions how the uh, this pandemic, the COVID had influenced the situation in Russia. How did it spoil further on the relations between Russia and some Visegrad countries? Uh, I pity it very much, but unfortunately it is the reality. So my first more official, official part uh, is dedicated to the uh, such a brief evaluation of our relations during these 30 years. So unfortunately, as I have already mentioned, uh, the Russia's relation with Central European countries uh, uh, seem to be again very complicated. Under the three decades since the beginning of systemic transformations, they have gone through a phase of mere, merely total cancellation of cooperation and denunciation of bilateral and collective agreements. Then a positive round of adjustment, including an attempt of rapprochement, and finally have returned to the previous downward tendency already for more than five years. It seemed that the only practical result was a change in the main paradigm of relations between Central Europe and Russia, when from special relations of allies they turned into general russian euro atlantic relations this can be evidenced by the fact that the, the significance of the region for russia as an area of special relations is finally leveled this follows from the last foreign policy concept of the russian federation uh, approved on November 13, uh, 2016, which doesn't even mention this region. This is a great pity. Probably since 2000, uh, these countries of Central Europe have become part of the um, European Union-Russia relations mainstream, and Moscow considers them as a part of foreign policy system of the entire Euro-Atlantic um, alliance. This is probably the main result of these three decades of our relations. So from the relations of allies to the relations to the general relations between Russia and the um, Euro-Atlantic community. Of course, here arises the question, are we still interesting and necessary to each other in principle? Uh, it is difficult to answer this question uh, unequivocally. The main thing here is that we are the closest neighbors uh, on the continent. We share 
together the 30 years of experience of social, political, and economic transformations uh, that dramatically changed our being as well, the images, uh, and the whole picture of the world at once. In addition to geographical proximity, our countries um, uh, have common cultural roots and not only negative, as it is increasingly presented today, uh, memoirs of a shared historical past. Therefore, the relationship between us as neighbors is a constant from which there is no escape, no matter to what an extent some groups of politicians would like to present it. But in any case, our new relations have to fit into the current geopolitical context. The Visegrad countries are now members of uh, the NATO alliance and the European Union. March 12, 2019 marked the 20th anniversary of the accession of Hungary, Poland and Czech Republic to NATO. And on May the 1st, 2019 for Visegrad countries summed up 15 years of their membership in the European Union. Therefore, our modern relations must correspond to this structural reality. It is possible that not mentioning the region in the latest concept of the Russian Federation foreign policy can be considered as a minor significance of foreign policy steps of Central European countries in the context of anti-Russian sanctions. Um, despite the private condemnation of this measure introduced by the European Union since 2014, the leaders of the quartet, in fact, do not risk entering into a confrontation with Brussels, preferring their loyalty to the integration that accepted them in course of their return to Europe. What is the historical context of such a situation? Opinions of uh, Russian intellectuals regarding relations with Central Europe still differ significantly. The elder generation uh, still regards this uh, region as a special and the younger generation, and I'm teaching at the, um, at the Russian School of Humanities, is uh, looking for encyclopedia to find where the region is. They do not have any um, imagination what was the Comic-Con or the Warsaw Pact today. That will show to what an extent was why the current political elite when it excluded the mentioning of the region from its foreign policy concept. If one will observe a series of improving and worsening in relations between Russia and Europe, Russia and Central Europe, he can come to the conclusion that it is not a social political structure that plays the most important role in them, but exactly the geopolitics embodying the most stable constant of our relations. Continentalism each time forces Russia to interrupt its short-lived Asian projects and return to Europe, trying either to combine integration ideas um, or uh, to move further in its relation with the West. But here again arises the geopolitical dilemma um, Russia's own gigantic size, it's stretching across several time zones and it's literally speaking overhang from uh, um, the side of the sunrise never ceases to worry its uh, Western neighbors, especially during periods of uh, uncertainty and crisis, making it difficult to see it as a possible ally and potential partner. Here from arises another worryness in the attitude of Europe toward its biggest neighbor, that is towards us, which requires patience, insistent work, and a special approach on the part of Russia. Over the past 30 years, our relations and our policies towards each other have gone through several stages and have undergone significant metamorphosis. Changes were influenced by events of various scales, as well as by personalities and politicians. Uh, 
In addition for Russia, these relations were not even with all the countries of the region. They were more successful with some of them and less with the others. Negative stability had been constant only for relations between Russia and the Wyshegrad group as a regional structure. But this, the establishment of such relations may not have been the goal of the parties. Neither Russia nor the countries of Eastern Europe at the first stage had any clear ideas about the future of bilateral relations. The only reason that brought them together in political terms was the idea uh, of the possibility of a joint exit from communism. Thus, the, our colleague, the Polish researcher Witold Dratkiewicz, highlighting several phases in relations between Russia and the Poland rights. The first phase, which lasted from 1991 to 1993, was characterized by inflated expectations, especially on the Polish side, that the common experience of exit from communism could provide a basis for opening a new chapter in Polish-Russian relations. More or less ideologically abstract, but at the same time conceptually based, were perceptions of Hungarians who managed to detect the opportunities in relations, uh, in these relations that appeared after the collapse of the USSR. Thus, they initially in, in, um, invested their pragmatic desire to obtain the uh, easier access to Russian natural resources at reasonable prices in the concept of the Finno Ugric ties, or Warwick ties. Despite Moscow's highly disapproving views, uh, they started to build relations with the related peoples of the Urals who live on source rich territories. The Czechs and Slovaks, who continued their trade and the economic contacts with Russia despite the debt uh, problem, also took an equally pragmatic approach to the problem. The idea of a joint exit from communism and totalitarianism totalitarianism became a victim of the Russian civil war in the fall of 1993, attacking the supreme Soviet of the Russian Federation with tanks, Russian President Boris Yeltsin shook the faith of the Europeans in the new Russia. Countries that until then stuck uh, to the ideals of Central Europe uh, that is, a return to regional ideas of the first half of the 20th century and aspired to the role of a bridge between East and West, actively started knocking at the doors of the European Union and NATO. After our relations hit the bottom in mid-1990s, uh, in the last decade of the past last century, uh, Russia and Central European states continued practically parallel courses establishing, establishing relations with Western European countries and their structures. Uh, a new stage in Russia-Central European relations came with the accession of the Visegrad countries to NATO and the war in the Balkans when they found themselves at different sides of the conflict. The confrontation between became particularly acute during the Balkan War when Hungary and later Romania refused Russia in its uh, request to open access to its uh, humanitarian convoy to Yugoslavia. Um, and uh, uh, the um, uh, peak of uh, the change in these relations as understood in uh, Russian foreign policy was the so-called uh, uh, the gesture of then um, uh, Russian uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Evgeny Primakov, uh, which uh, have got the name of a Primakov loop, when he um, uh, stopped his uh, uh, visit to the White House, being uh, already um, above uh, the Atlantic Ocean. This got thus the uh, name of a Primakov loop. Um, and Russia, he showed by this gesture that Russia's course would no longer be the same 
focused uh, solely on the international interests. For a long time, Russia could not work out clear and distinct position on any of the problems of its transfrontier environment, neither on Moldova nor on Ukraine, and even more so on Yugoslavia. Therefore, for Europe, Russia's decision to mediate in the negotiations with Milosevic was a surprise and at the same time a countdown of a new attitude towards Moscow. Russia, a few years before, without any resistance attempt, took as effect the partition of the former republics of the USSR together with the 30 million Russian diaspora, and then it withdrew its troops from Eastern Europe without any guarantees and later not only contributed to the resolution of the Yugoslav case, uh, Yugoslav uh, conflict in uh, the Western Key, but also contributed to the NATO's exit from the conflict with the improved reputation. This policy, of course, appealed to the Russia's Western partners, and they sought to impose on it as many profitable projects as possible. Uh, despite the primacov loop relations between Russia and European Union in the very beginning of the 21st century continued to develop quite successfully. Uh, that was both the time of final ideological parting as well as a starting point for pragmatic economical convergence between Russia and Central European states. Uh, <clears throat> this situ uh, the situation was very much influenced by good relations between Russia and some of its uh, Western partners, especially between uh, uh, Germany and Russia, between Italy and Russia that um, helped, uh, we, that understood that without um, Russia's goodwill, the peaceful acceptance of these countries into the European Union uh, is, um, uh, will be uh, very much more difficult than <clears throat> they turned to. Finally, in June 2001, the first uh, uh, deputy foreign minister of uh, the Russian <clears throat> Federation Alexander Avdiv have pronounced the phrase which we were uh, the professionals uh, who are um, um, studying the relations between Russia and Central Europe. We were waiting for these words for uh, merely a decade. He pronounced that we are ready to follow the path of developing relations with Eastern European countries as far as our partners themselves are ready to do so. There also began to emerge positive agendas in the Eastern politics of the Visegrad countries. However, this period lasted also not so very long and uh, the relations started to deteriorate sharply again. And uh, due to the policies of uh, Poland and Lithuania, who blocked the prolongations by vetoing uh, um, uh, some of the Russia's agreements, they blocked the prolongation of the basic agreement between European Union and Russia. And afterwards, uh, its uh, word made uh, the Eastern Partnership policy developed in 2008-2009, uh, uh, um, adopted in 2009. Uh, which has brought um, uh, our relations again to a dangerous conflict over uh, Ukraine. Um, currently, since then, in Russian bilateral relations with Central European countries, there appeared no common models and parts. For a long time, the main policy of the Russian Federation was to maintain relation with the socialist parties in these countries, and thus, uh, the uh, Hungarian-Russian relations were the first example when uh, the Russian government have uh, managed to build uh, quite positive and uh, fruitful relations with uh, the centrist parties from uh, Central Europe. <clears throat> Uh, also, in the Visegrad countries, there has not been a unified approach towards relations with Russia uh, for three decades, and uh, no vision has appeared yet, as I can guess. 
um, uh, in Hungary, when the conservatives uh, came to power, they had proposed an alternative to the Eastern Partnership policy in a manifest of a policy of opening to the East. Um, Donald Tusk, when being a, 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 a Prime Minister of Poland, have told that it is better to have uh, any relations with Russia than to have it, uh, not to have it at all. Uh, Slovakia and um, uh, Czech Republic had uh, very pragmatic relations with um, the Russian Federation uh, up to uh, the current moment. Uh, well, the, I shall not prolong on the post-Ukrainian um, um, stage of our relations um, any longer, uh, because uh, it had um, the Ukrainian crisis has a very strong impact on our relations till now, uh, when uh, the interest of uh, the eastern and the uh, western um, uh, neighbors of the Ukraine came into uh, conflict, but. Uh, currently, uh, what should be changed? I think the currently seeing the results that the countries of Central Europe, the Visegrad four countries, have achieved after the 30 years of reforms, Russia should um, um, uh, again change its policy towards the region in, in the positive key uh, to uh, um, evaluate um, uh, the uh, uh, readiness to accept the new Russia uh, uh, and um, uh, oh, but uh, in case when Russia uh, will also prove uh, for its uh, Central European possible partners its possibility uh, for um, a new, more open and more democratic uh, way of development and uh, its uh, innovative and progressive way in economics. Uh, thank you for giving me a floor. Uh, if you will allow just a few remarks I have uh, started before uh, on the post-COVID realities. What has happened to us? Uh, for Russia, a good example might be Central European countries uh, also uh, in a way how they managed to overcome this crisis because uh, out of all the Europe, they showed the better results in curing these disease, uh, the lesser uh, people uh, were uh, injured by it and uh, less death and so on. We in Russia uh, are now occupying a third place in the world, uh, though uh, far lagging behind the United States and Brazil. And I think what we should concentrate on, we should not invade, invent some artificial threats for us. We should more concentrate on the natural threats surrounding us, that is, on the problems on climate, on the problems on healthcare and of preventing um, misfortunes alike. Thank you very much.